Now, the second thing um, is to think about learning stuff not just through the cycle of fourths, but learning everything chromatically in intervals of minor thirds, whole step apart, and so on. I'm going to talk about that in more detail. So, for instance, let's say we're taking let's say we're taking C Lydian as a mode. So that's like the major scale, but with a sharp and fourth. So if we're learning that, okay, if we're doing it through the cycle of force, we do F Lydian. And that's okay. But let's also learn it in a different fashion. So the first thing I want to talk about is, let's say, let's take it and we're going to play it in whole steps. So we're going to do C Lydian, D Lydian, E Lydian, F sharp Lydian, or G flat Lydian, A flat Lydian, B flat Lydian, back to C. So we go D, E, G flat or F sharp, A flat, B flat, and C. Now, it's easy because we're just doing a shape there. We're just moving it. So again, let's apply what I talked about before about the single string idea. So first of all, we've got C Lydian. So we're going to go C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. OK, fine. Let's try D. D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E. E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, B sharp, E. And so on. You get the idea. So what we're doing is we're not just working through the cycle of fifths, but we're actually now modulating in a different fashion. The reason for this is modern harmony, especially in the jazz uh, idiom, doesn't necessarily work just working through the cycle of, of fourths now. Harmony can move quite randomly. It can move in intervals of minor thirds and whole steps. You think about John Coltrane with giant steps. Think about Wayne Shorter's tunes, Jaco Pastorius. These tunes didn't follow traditional harmonic ways of moving. So this kind of prepares you in your practice routine. Look at randomizing stuff. Same thing when you're playing arpeggios as well. So for instance, too, another thing I like to do is take a major scale, for instance, we'll start with that, and we'll look at different ways to practice it, so avoiding that cycle of fourths idea. So for instance, one of the cool things to do is this, practice it in one key ascending and a different key descending. So here's C major ascending. Let's, let's do C Lydian, actually. Let's come back down D flat Lydian. So we've moved up a half step. We're still using a Lydian mode, but now we're in the key of D flat Lydian. And so on, right? So we just keep going. We can go from here. Now we could do D Lydian. Now E flat to ascend. So, on. so that way we're modulating each time and we're not moving just a fourth away, which is a very close to relating key, but we're actually moving half steps. And you can see the difference, especially going from D Lydian, for instance, which has three sharps in it, going to E flat Lydian, okay? Which is interesting because that only ha that has two flats in it. So we're really moving to different keys. And this sometimes happens in modern harmony. You'll hear a song that'll go. And there's like a modulation down a half step, two parallel major seven chords. So, yeah. And this way, if you practice it in this fashion, you really prepare yourself for knowing what's under your hands and being aware of common chord tones and so forth. So it's kind of a cool way to practice. You can apply that to arpeggios as well. We'll do the same thing, right? Let's stick with the Lydian idea, or at least with the major concept right now. So let's say I take an A flat major seven, and I'm going to play this over, let's say, two octaves across the fingerboard. Check it out. Okay, I might play it here as well. Now, obviously, I can come back down, same key. But I, I don't think that's as challenging. So we go. So we're A flat. Now let's do it A major seven descending. So we'll start on the A here. Up B flat, down B, up C, down D flat, up D, down E flat. Same thing, you see, you're really having to think each time, each direction is a new key. 
And this stops us from switching off because the thing is with the bass and the guitar, they're very pattern oriented instruments. You know, in one sense, you could say, well, hey, I know everything in every key because I just got the shape stamp, but that's not really knowing the instrument. It's knowing a shape. So this way, even though you're using the patterns and the shapes to shift effectively, you're really training your brain to react fast to modulations and tunes. So it's a great way to think when you actually practice some new material. Cool?